Hello, folks, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Greg Smith, and I have my colleague Ankur Sharma here with me today. We're going to be talking about a project we're working on at Nutanix to enhance OVN with native support for dynamic routing. So why would we want to do that? Allow me to provide just a little bit of backstory. Nutanix offers a service called Xi, which is currently aimed at providing disaster recovery as a service. Our tenants replicate VM snapshots into our data centers, and if their primary environment becomes unavailable for whatever reason, they can spin up their workload in our data centers. So obviously we need a multi-tenant network to host that workload, and we use OVN as our network controller for that. This allows us to provide each of our tenants with their own isolated virtual networks or VPCs. We use a physical router to connect our tenants VPCs to the internet. We also offer a direct connect solution whereby a tenant can establish VPN connectivity to a VPC over a dedicated physical circuit instead of the WAN. So outbound connectivity for us is fairly straightforward. We just treat the external router as our default gateway. But for inbound or southbound connectivity, we need to advertise routes so the external router knows where to forward traffic, preferably through a standard routing protocol like MPBGP so that we're loosely coupled. By this mechanism, we can configure the external router to tunnel traffic directly to the hypervisor hosting a destination port. So OVN doesn't natively support dynamic routing protocols. OpenStack has some plugins for solving these problems, but we don't use OpenStack. We have our own custom software for managing our virtual infrastructure. And as a result, we had to build our own integration between OVN and a BGP speaker. After operating the first version of this service for a few years, we're looking to revamp it. We thought it would be great for OVN to take a more batteries included approach to dynamic routing. And so we spent some time looking at how we might integrate the support into OVN natively. And to describe that integration proposal in more detail, I'll hand it off to Ankur who did all the exploratory work in this project. Thanks, Greg. Hi everyone, I am Ankur Sharma from Nutanix. Um, now that we understand uh, why uh, we are looking at the native integration of dynamic routing with OVM. Uh, let's see exactly what are the requirements for us to, uh, from the integration, what are the key requirements from the integration itself and how it helps us in uh, tackling our use cases, right? So some of the key requirements we have is that uh, with the help of the dynamic routing in OVM, uh, we should be able to integrate with the non-OVM VTAPs. Uh, these VTAPs could be switches, physical switches. These VTAPs could be physical routers, right? And the integration should not be just bound to actually a layer two bridging sort of a use case. The integration could also be bound to an actual routing use case. Um, this integration we want to achieve with the help of uh, standard routing protocols, um, mostly because we want to be vendor agnostic. We want to have minimum uh, vendor specific uh, adapter footprint in our software. So we want to use a standard routing protocol and the protocol of choice for us is AVPN. EVPN as defined in RFC 7432, it's basically a MAC reachability protocol. Um, unlike traditional networking, where we expect that with the help of dynamic MAC learning, we will know this MAC address is behind this, uh, uh, this port or this VTAP. Um, uh, the idea behind EVPN is that with the help of the control plane, we can advertise that, hey, this MAC is behind this endpoint or behind this VTAP. Uh, this is especially helpful in the overlay network uh, environments because we can, uh, with the help of EVPN, somebody can advertise that, hey, this MAC is behind this VTAP. And then uh, from the packet flow perspective, the packet can be tunneled directly to the corresponding VTAP. Uh, some of the key, I would say, facilities given by EVPN is that, hey, uh, it works with the multiple underlay technologies. Um, so it's not tied to any specific underlay protocol uh, because uh, it's mostly applicable for overlay networking. So it works with VXLAN. It works with Geneve, it works with GRE. It uses the standard BGP-based protocol for uh, message passing mechanism. So that is also something which is uh, uh, quite widely adopted and seen in, the, in any data center environment. Uh, for example, the use case that, uh, that Greg discussed in the Y section, right? Uh, with the help of uh, MPBGP, uh, the, we are expecting that from an OVN logical router, we will be advertising 
uh, following attributes. Uh, the first one is, of course, VNI. Uh, let's call it the green VNI. Uh, second one is prefix. And because we want the packet to be tunneled directly to the host where the VM 10.0.0.10 resides. So in this case, the prefix is basically a slash 32 route. So it's 10.0.0.10 slash 32. Uh, for each um, for each advertised prefix, there has to be an extra op. Uh, so we advertise the v so we give the VTAP on which this VM resides as the next stop IP. And uh, since the EVPN is all about MAC advertisements, so as a part of uh, this advertisement, we'll also say that what is the router MAC, right? So in this case, we give the logical routers MAC address, which in this diagram is MAC router as the router MAC. With these attributes propagated by the logical routers dynamic routing protocol, uh, when the southbound packet comes from the external router, it will be tunneled directly to the hypervisor where 10.0.0.10 resides, right? Uh, so whatever we advertised is consumed in both the outer header as well as the inner header of the packet. So the VTAP IP, which we advertised, definitely goes to the outer header's destination IP. That's how we make sure that packets are tunneled directly to the hypervisor. We, in the outer header, we'll also see the VNI the green VNI, the one we advertised. And in the inner packet, we will see that the, whatever we advertise as a destination MAC, which is the MAC address of the router port, which connects, which logically connects to the external router, we will see the same MAC address as the destination MAC in the inner header. So, um, so what are the key um, uh, properties, right? that we are expecting in the native uh, dynamic routing support in OVM, right? Uh, so basically, like I said, we want to add dynamic routing, right, natively in OVM. Uh, we want to use FRR as the protocol stack, right? Why FRR? Uh, mostly because um, FRR is catching up as a standard protocol stack. So now that we are adding some capability for the first time in OVM, we want to start, right? We want to start with the, with the stack, which we think is going to be evolving. Is going to be more futuristic and something which is adopted by, um, which is which is being widely adopted by everyone. Right? Uh, architecturally, also FRR suits our need uh, pretty well. Uh, FRR has a modular architecture, so instead of having one big monolithic code or one big monolithic process which is running different routing protocols, uh, uh, in FRR each routing protocol has its own code, has its own uh, I would say module, and uh, uh, and it, and when the protocols are running, uh, not everything has to run. We can just pick and run the protocol that we are interested in. So for example, uh, the use cases that we are looking for, we think that BGP is the sufficient routing protocol for us. So that means from FRR, we don't really have to uh, pick everything. We'll just pick BGP and uh, uh, run that for us. And last but not the least, uh, the dynamic routing capability that we'll add should be able to read the state from the OVN databases and convert the state to the corresponding MP BGP message and advertise to the external router. Right. Uh, so now that we understand uh, what exactly we are trying to uh, accomplish uh, in OVN, right, for our use cases, let's see how we are going to accomplish that. Right. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, we are uh, we are looking for at FRR as our routing protocol stack. Right, uh, FRR is also known as free range routing. Um, so basically it's an open source um, IP routing suite. Um, a key requirement is BGP VPN. FRR supports it pretty well. Uh, it's a forked version from Quagga. Quagga used to be another standard uh, uh, open source router or open source routing protocol. So it's a forked version from there. And like I said, architecturally, it has a very modular architecture. So it allows us to pick and choose what we're interested in, right? Uh, something which uh, we find quite valuable, uh, especially uh, the fact that uh, we don't want to run all, all sorts of routing protocols from OVN. So the footprint of the, uh, the routing code and the routing protocols that we want to run, we want to keep it minimal to the requirements uh, as per the requirements. So uh, FRR architecture definitely helps us out there. Um, so what we are looking for is to add a new daemon by the name of OVN routing. Uh, it's going to be a centralized daemon, just like OVN North D, right? So instead of running 
multiple places. Uh, it's going to be one instance of it running for each OVN deployment, uh, just like OVN North T, right? Uh, this daemon links with the BGP module of FRR, right? And since uh, FRR is modular, that means uh, it could link with multiple uh, um, modules from FRR going forward based on the requirements. Uh, this daemon is capable of reading configurations from OVN databases, right? That means it understands. So if you if there's some configuration OVN North in OVN database, then this daemon actually understands what what is a what is a what is a logical router, what is a logical switch. What's a data path binding? What is a port binding? So this daemon has understanding of all that, right? And last but not the least, uh, because it links with the FRR BGP, so it uses the FRR BGP functions to actually do the route advertisements. Right? Uh, uh, so how are we building it? What are the key components of this uh, OVN routing? Uh, so let's start with the FRR itself. Uh, so like I said, FRR is modular, allows us to pick and choose. So we picked the BGPD module from FRR. We uh, we have taken the libfrr.a, which is a standard. So when you build FRR, uh, it builds a common library, which is libfrr. Uh, so we what we did, we combined both BGPD and libfrr together and created a library uh, by the name libfrrbgp.a. This library is linked with this daemon, right? And similarly, we picked the OVSDB library from OpenV switch code and link the link that library as well to OVN routing. So what this does is that gives us the it gives the OVN routing daemon capabilities that hey uh, on one end I'm linking with the FRR code so I'm capable of doing the dynamic routing right and on the other end I'm also linking with the OVSDB library so I'm able to do uh, I'm able to understand uh, the, and the uh, OVSDB messages OVSDB protocol right with the with both the libraries linked to it now OVN routing can actually read the OVN database with the help of OVSDB protocol and convert the state and advertise the same as a BGP message to the external router. For example, OVN routing can now read the OVN southbound database, identify the location of a virtual machine, right? It can figure out the VM to beta binding and it can advertise the same uh, as a part of MP BGP message to the corresponding external router. Okay. Um, so architecture, that's how what OVN routing looks like, right? Uh, it's work in progress. We are building it, we are testing it out. And uh, since this talk is more of a proposal, so we do have a few open items still on our plate. And uh, as we are making progress in uh, getting this OVN routing daemon up and running and uh, actually um, trying to test it out in our data center environments, uh, there are a few basic questions we are still trying to answer. Uh, for example, uh, the configuration mechanism, right? Uh, should we rely on, uh, just like OVN North T, should we just rely on the OVN Northbound database as the configuration input for the OVN routing daemon? Or should we have its own native uh, configuration mechanism, right? Um, similarly, uh, reading from the Southbound database for VM's location doesn't look very natural because, uh, uh, because the VM placement is a top-down approach, right? The, the compute scheduler running as a part of the management plane or CMS uh, decides where the VM is placed, right? And then the VM is migrated to the corresponding node. Right? So that means uh, the where a VM is residing, right? That decision is taken beforehand, before the port is actually migrated to the VM. Uh, so it comes in, but reading from the southbound database implies that, hey, VM has been placed already, and now I am reading that. So it becomes a bottom-up approach, right? Uh, so since uh, it's more natural, especially from the VM placement perspective, to follow a top-down approach, so we are also thinking if it is uh, if it is wise to continue reading the southbound database to get VM's location, or should we add a new table in the northbound database and the CMS can actually notify as soon as a VM placement decision is taken, uh, CMS can actually notify uh, OVN routing through the northbound database table or some other configuration mechanism if we want to go with it in OVN routing. And that's how OVN routing will know that this is where the VM is located. So let me do the BGP advertisement, giving a different VTAP IP for this uh, slash 32 VMs, uh, for this VM's IP as a slash 32 advertisement. Um, so we have basically covered uh, our use cases. We have covered how, uh, uh, we have covered uh, what exactly we need from OVN to uh, help us with those use cases, right? And now we covered uh, some of the architecture details uh, that we'll, uh, about how we plan to integrate 
uh, how plan to have a native uh, dynamic routing support in uh, OVM. Uh, so that's all we wanted to cover in today's talk. We'll be happy to take questions now. Uh, thank you.